Warning, this content may be disturbing to some audiences. Subscribe. If you dare. I'm doing a glacier tour and the dude sitting next to me just looks at me and says I'm the captain now and ganks the plane 30 degrees to the right. Hey everybody, welcome to, an Actost. People ask Reddit. Tour guides of Reddit, what's the worst thing a tourist has ever done under your supervision? Number 1. Let a scuba diving tour. While signing the safety waivers and all that one very old man kept telling us that he had a DNR, do not resuscitate. We plainly told him that we are not bound to a DNR, and if he passed out for any reason we would attempt to resuscitate by our safety training. Pretty much all the divers are assuming this guy is gonna kill himself down there, prob spit out the reg and go quietly into the night. Dive happens, pretty much everyone is hawkeyed on this guy. I see him go behind a large coral head and lay down in the sand and spit out his reg. He is only at about 60 feet so I grab him and wrestle him to the surface. He will not take my backup regulator so I slam it against his mouth to purge air into his face. We get to the surface and he is fighting me non-stop trying to pull all of his gear off. I throw a very hard punch to his jaw and knock him out, actually trained to do this during dive rescues to keep the panicked person from killing you too. Three weeks later and he tries to sue my dive shop and myself personally. Number 2. About 15 years ago, I worked as a deckhand on a line of boats that took people out to Fort Sumter. The trip was about an hour each way. One day, we were about halfway there and two teenagers decided it would be fun to jump off and try to swim to shore. This is in Charleston Harbor, which has a pretty solid tidal current, lots of boat traffic, and probably more sharks than one would like to think about. We ended up having to perform a water rescue on them. Then continued on to the fort, with the Coast Guard coming and picking them up. All in all, an extreme act of stupidity. Number 3. I used to do vineyard and garden tours for a pretty well-known winery. I had a lady ask to see any Merlot vines we had so I walked her over and she proceeded to dump ash all over them and yell we love you Nana. Rest in peace. Needless to say you are not allowed to dump human remains on food goods. Number 4. I'm a bush pilot in Alaska and occasionally do glacier air tours my boss asks, I'm not a fan of doing tours. One day I'm doing a glacier tour and had probably seven people on board, and the dude sitting next to just looks at me and says I'm the captain now and yanks the plane 30 degrees to the right and then lets go and laughs saying he was just kidding. There was yelling to follow via my mouth. Number 5. I work in the backcountry ski guiding industry, working my way to becoming a lead guide. Guests are always trying to kill themselves but here's one that stands out. Right now I mostly tail guide and pick people up when they fall, which is most of the time. One particularly deep day I'm sweeping a tree run and all of a sudden there's a man digging frantically in the snow towards a pair of legs. His wife had fallen head first down slope in a flattish area. When her lawn darted the first half of her body was buried in the snow and only her legs and feet were visible. Her husband thought it was a good idea to stand on top where her face obviously was and start digging near the exposed part of her body. I guess in the moment he forgot about human anatomy and where her head might be. Dot. At this point I was maybe 3 minutes behind them so she'd had her face under the surface for a while. I told him to stop and move, yelled stop you're on her face, I tried adding a couple expletives but nothing. I finally had to grab him by the backpack and power bomb him down the slope. I uncovered her face in under 10 seconds. She gasped for air, had a cry and then proceeded to tear that man to pieces verbally. Number 6. Used to be a tour guide at a primate sanctuary with a strict no touching policy. At the end of the tour there's a suspension bridge, tourists go first, guide goes last as per the rules. I always warn the tourists that the other side is the territory of a Hanuman Langer and he doesn't F around, keep your distance etc. He doesn't attack people out of nowhere, but he likes showing his teeth and screaming, which scares tourists. Anyway, one tour I got to the other side of the bridge, and a tourist got bitten. He says a monkey just bit him out of nowhere. Ask the other tourists, no he tried to effing pet the Hanuman. Dumbass got what he deserved. Number 7. Not a tour guide, but was doing an English language camp for foreign kids. Took the kids on a day trip to London, which involved going up the London Eye. While in the queue, one of the kids started shouting that he had a bomb in his bag and he was going to blow everyone up. Almost got all 20 kids in the group kicked out. Number 8. On an open top tour bus in London, a woman tries to dangle her toddler over the railing, then starts saying she's going to complain to my manager when I tell her to stop. 
caught her doing it again and company policy said that anyone endangering their kids like that was to be removed from the tour, so the driver had to come up and march her off. She still insisted she did nothing wrong. Like, she literally had the kid's feet on the side rail of the moving bus and was just holding him loosely round the waist. One low hanging tree branch, of which there were many on the route, and that kid was gone. Number 9. I was working on a tourist island in Australia when this man pulled out almost all the back feathers of a peacock because he wanted to keep one. He sneaked up behind it, and grabbed a huge handful and yanked them all out. He was immediately escorted off the island. The peacock had a huge bare patch and most of its beautiful feathers were gone. Number 10. I used to work at a heritage site. It was an old military installation with a lot of remaining original structures, bunk beds, cafeteria equipment, computers etc. Every day it was a constant effort to remind people, read, kids, not to jump on the beds, not to slam doors open, not to punch every button like it owes them money. The absolute worst was a group of kids on a school trip. Within the first 10 minutes we're walking through the tech portion of the exhibit, where we had a wall lined with Burroughs large systems machines, B5000s, all behind this little fence about waist high. I turned to demonstrate some of the pieces, and when I looked back at the group one of them had jumped over the barrier, opened one of the units and started pulling out handfuls of digital tape from the reels inside. I just about jumped on the kid when their teacher did just that. She jumped the barrier, smacked the kid's hands and took him outside. I immediately ended the tour and had them all refunded, as I couldn't imagine what else could happen. Number 11. I work at a brewery tap room and take people on brewery tours. During fermentation CO2 is produced and excess comes out through a runoff pipe and into a water bucket. One of the attendees, who was being a pain and trying to be funny but nobody was laughing, asked me what the pipe was for, so I gladly explained. He then asked what would happen if he breathed it in. In disbelief of his stupidity I told him he would pass out slash damage his brain, he then proceeded to grab the pipe and take a breath. He was then ejected and barred. Some people are just beyond belief. Number 12. I worked at a living history farm museum. I had a kid that was climbing on stuff the whole tour in the farmhouse and trying to get behind the smith in the blacksmith shop during a demo. After the tour when people are allowed to roam the grounds, I hear his mom screaming and look over to the barn and this kid has climbed the fence into the field with our longhorn oxen and is trying to poke them with a stick. I walk over and calmly tell him to get out of the field before our lazy oxen decide they've had enough, but this jack-off decides to look me in the eye and smack Ted on the ass with the stick like it's a riding crop. Ted, bless him, just kinda jumps a little and whips his head around with a WTF dude look on his face. But seeing as he's a longhorn, he just wipes this kid out with one of his horns when he turns his head. Kid goes flying into the dirt and is having a meltdown. Mom is freaking out. I'm like dude, get the hell out of the pen before Ted actually gets mad. So this kid is crying and trying to climb the fence out of the field and Bill, who has been watching this whole thing waits until the kid is almost over the fence and walks up to him and nudges him in the ass with his nose and pushes him off the top of the fence. It was everything I could do to keep from laughing. Kid was fine, Ted was fine, but the kid and his mom were promptly kicked out of the museum. Their dad and little sister were allowed to stay because she was well behaved and was just enjoying petting the goats at the petting zoo. So since the kid had to leave but his sister didn't there was a temper tantrum in the parking lot that could be heard all the way to the other side of the farm. But the oxen got some extra grain that night so I guess they won in the end. Number 13. I once was a tour guide in high school for a group of young Chinese students coming to the rural US on a sort of fresh air trip. They told us beforehand that we had to keep the kids away from water because apparently parents don't value swimming lessons in China and there is such little open swimmable water that no one learns on their own. We were also told that the kids think swimming happens naturally, like if you go into water, you'll immediately start swimming. Anyways, one of our excursions was to a local reservoir, and the plan was to hike up a hill nearby to overlook the reservoir lake, get a few photos, and then leave. When we got to the top, it started pouring rain like I had never seen before. I'm talking so much rain you can't see 5 feet in front of you. Then lightning starts striking the lake and I'm still trying to keep it cool even though I had never been so close to lightning before. The students were taking it well and laughing, which was good, until they started running directly for the lake and jumped in. Apparently they had also never learned about electricity conducting through water, so I freaked out and started pulling them out of the water, they weren't in very far, and a couple of them complained that their phones were wet. In the rain. No one got hurt, but it was a crazy day. We got back on the bus and the kids started drinking liquor in the back, 
They ranged ages 9 to 16, and I had to bust them for that too. Number 14. Tour guide at a university. We got a lot of guests that really, really don't want to be there. Mostly misbehaved kids from a poor area of the city. We toured at all times, even during finals week. As many may know, sound can travel oddly in lecture centers. Our lecture centers have windows around them, and like six kids thought it would be hilarious to smash on the windows. From the inside it sounds like gunshots are being shot from outside, or at least muffled gunshots. Watched 100 plus students flee the classroom during their final exam. We got a lot of shit for that. It isn't easy corralling a group of 30 plus students. That's the chaperone's job. Number 15. I'm in the middle of talking and someone's phone rings. Okay, that happens sometimes, and usually they just cancel the call or step outside. Nope, this guy answers the call and starts talking on the phone, only a few meters from where I'm standing. I think, oh he'll just quickly explain he's busy and end the call, nope. He starts a conversation. The rest of the group glare at him and I'm put in an awkward position because my workplace put a huge emphasis on politeness. So I suggested to him to continue his call in the hallway, just outside the room we were in, to which he replied no, I'm fine here, and went back to his phone conversation. I'm doing my best to talk to the rest of the group, about 25 people, but he's so loud. Eventually this Chinese woman yells across the room at him shut up, we want to listen to the lady, not you which worked. But I just couldn't imagine the nerve to ruin everyone's experience like that, cause you're too selfish to talk on the phone outside. Make sure to share your personal story in the comments below and have the opportunity to be featured in a future video. Also, if you like these topics don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button to continue seeing more content like this every day. See you next time.